President Biden is the ultimate multitasker today. After focusing on Ukraine and other issues at the G7, he's heading home, where debt ceiling negotiations are a hot mess. And all of this is happening as he's running for re-election. Joining me now, Senator Tammy Duckworth, member of the Armed Services and Foreign Relations Committees, and she is a national co-chair of President Biden's re-election campaign. Senator Duckworth, welcome to The Sunday Show. It's good to be on, Jonathan. So well, President Biden approved Ukrainian pilots being trained on F-16s. In, in response, the Russian deputy foreign minister warned of, quote, enormous risks if that were to happen. Is this a more subtle threat by Russia to use nuclear weapons in its war on Ukraine? No, I don't think so. I, I just don't think that they want the Ukrainians to have any type of assistance. They've issued similar threats over everything from more, you know, self-defensive Patriot missiles to uh, providing ammunition. Uh, and I was on the letter asking President Biden back in March to uh, start training Ukrainian pilots, and I'm glad that he's approved it. As a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, I would love your reaction to Senator Tuberville's hold on a couple hundred Pentagon promotions to pressure the Defense Department to change its abortion care policies. Well, he's holding the entire nation's national security hostage for his own personal social agenda. Uh, if he doesn't like the Pentagon's policy, which allows service members to travel out of the state that they're assigned to, uh, to go get reproductive health care, and that's not always just abortions, by the way. Right. It could be to access IVF treatments like I did. Um, you know, if you don't have the reproductive health care services at the station where you've been assigned by the U.S. government, by the needs of the U.S. government, you should be able to travel out of state to access that care. Um, there's a process that he can change that policy, and that's called the, uh, you know, the, the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, which is we, we negotiate that every single year. But instead, he's holding out the promotions of uh, um, hundreds of generals hostage. And these are people who are going to be, you know, the general in charge of all logistics for the Army. This is folks who are going to be in charge of the entire theaters of operation. Um, and he's really putting our national security at risk for his personal social um, agenda. And you're also, uh, you're a veteran yourself, so I can just imagine how you feel as, as a former member of the armed services. But let's talk about um, um, the debt ceiling. A, a, gr a group of Democratic senators sent a letter to President Biden urging him to invoke the 14th Amendment to prevent the United States from defaulting. At his press conference this morning, he spoke favorably, if not cautiously, about invoking that amendment. If memory serves, you didn't sign that letter. Is that because you don't view it as a, as a viable option? I worry about the unintended consequences and the timing of uh, such a move. Yes, it remains on the table, and certainly the president can invoke it, um, but it would immediately go through the court system. I think the better thing to do is just to raise the debt ceiling, pay our credit card bill because it's come due, don't default on our debt, and then have a conversation as a family about where do we need to cut back on spending? What do we need to do with the nation's budget? That is the clearest way forward. And frankly, Speaker McCarthy is allowing himself and the entire nation to be held hostage by MAGA Republicans, this minority of about 20 people in his caucus who want to, you know, uh, hold middle class families, middle income families hostage for, again, uh, uh, an agenda that doesn't look out for the nation's well-being. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a national co-chair of the president's re-election campaign. As I mentioned, the president suggested today that some House Republicans are using the debt ceiling showdown as a political weapon. Listen. I think there are some MAGA Republicans in the House who know the damage that it would do to the economy. And because I am president and presidents are responsible for everything, Biden would take the blame, and that's the one way to make sure Biden's not reelected. Senator, do you agree with that assessment? Will voters blame the president if we go into default? I think the voters will blame all um, those who should be making that decision, myself included. Um, yes, uh, I think this is a political ploy by, again, a minority within the Republican Party. And I don't know why Speaker McCarthy is listening just to MAGA Republicans. There are 435 members of the House of Representatives, and he seems to be held hostage by a very small group uh, that doesn't care about the nation's economy, that doesn't seem to care about families that are on pensions, people with mortgages who are going to be devastated by us not raising the debt ceiling if we default on our debt. In the meantime, there are very sensible ways forward. Raise the debt ceiling through the election, 
um, and let's sit down and talk about the budget and where we can cut our nation's spending, but in a responsible way that doesn't hurt working families like those that represent in the Midwest. And one more question for you, Senator, real quickly. Uh, the Republican field is about to grow. You've got Senator Tim Scott going to jump into the race. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is expected to jump into the race next week. Um, how does a large Republican field affect the president's campaign strategy? You know, I don't think it does at all. The president is strong. He has uh, led this country out of a global pandemic. Uh, he passed um, historic legislation that invested in our nation's infrastructure. Uh, the uh, Chips and Science Act is bringing critical manufacturing back to the United States. Uh, I think, you know, the president's going to run on his own record. And the, if there's going to be a circus on the Republican side, then let them fight that out on their own. But we're going to run on a message where we have been taking care of working families across this country, and we're going to continue to live up to our promises to them.